I'm now going to read the second part of the serial poem, Transhistorical Geography. This part is entitled Monadology. A preface to Monadology is the second video in this series. This is the third. Invoking cells and colonies, the architect considered the cathedral's structural integrity, an, an apocalyptical framing of solar scales. Temples are monads, monads temples, where oversized horse flies awaken on the first day of summer. The Capilla de Atillo is a rhomboid, its roof a hyperbolic paraboloid. Arcs intersect angles that spill over sun-bright plazas, precisely indicated shadows, enormous clocks, radial arms, define solar scales. Subatomic particles simultaneously follow all possible paths. The monad, uncurled from its cradle or artichoke globe, swimming monads abrupt on oceans that were skies, skies, oceans. Maria Zambrano wrote about vegetables. The vegetable dreams its life is sleep, but its reality and dream are one as in fantasy, for it dreams itself, and also because it sleeps permanently, and what it dreams is what it is. The plant is the shape of its dream. In the animal, bad dreams begin, the dream that is different from its own being, the nightmare. Nightmare is the dream opposed to life, the dream that bears down on consciousness or the hint of consciousness and that has to originate in the necessity for movement. The quiet vegetable ecstatic is immersed in its sleep and in not moving, does not distinguish between outside and inside, and so does not need to have consciousness. Consciousness has arisen from movement, and movement in turn makes it feel and creates the sensation of a rift in its reality, divides it into my outside and my inside. Movement is necessary for the animal. It is the generic form of its life because its necessity is without limits and because it must go far in search of its satisfaction, and this too is its power. Without movement, it has no power, and so the root of its necessity and the root of its power equally oblige it to move. For the plant all must be felt inside only. Gently may it feel the outside, and not as such, but as a brush, as a wound, in the worst case, the tree, the plant, live their dream within, not only feeling the earth where its roots are buried, but all of space, the dome of the sky. For these are born not in going out from itself, but in a budding, a passing, darkness to light, and the air that continues to cover them as before the earth did the seed but without oppression, an inside very spacious and light where its being unfolds and enters through subtle relations with the other, the other as with the animal, the other which is the origin of the enemy. The feeling for other bodies will present itself to them in different forms of relation without struggle or antagonism, corresponding perhaps to moments of contemplation of the beautiful in human life. 
the beautiful, even happiness, devolves for man from the world where the vegetable has continued to live, since they bring it to the interior without boundaries, to a spacious inside where it is not imprisoned or exiled. To live outside is to wander in amazement and in struggle. To live inside is to be bound and isolated. This manner of vegetable living and that which may man enjoys when he feels beauty or is happy is neither outside nor inside. Participation in the life of the whole without going to find it is the presence not pursued, the being without boundaries that senses the richness of the universe unfolded. Meanwhile, in human life, one seeks the whole of that which the other, el otro, and the other, lo otro, enclose within themselves, pursuing it, conquering it, among the avatars of the necessity to possess what refuses us all the same the quietude of living within and the freedom of living without. My mind slips into pre-lapsarian sludge. By means of incorporation, the writer explores beastliness. The experience of sex loses generic markers. Aquamarine fish and arachnid presences a mucilaginous body made of polysaccharide catagenin infests a plane of consistency. He wanted to stay in the dream arena in a time before time that is not time. Alligators and lobsters embedded in a tree weep a heavenly milk on which ants feed, scurrying feet, swamp creation, a red dye acidic to taste buds, acetic, ascetic apotheosis. Every substance is a mirror of God. Foam in the wake of the ceremonial bark, an incessant dream abets desperate poverty. I drag two children over the pavement away from police who inventory our belongings, the yellow tape of no return. It is not a flat plane hung before the eye like a window, but a glass float from a Japanese fishing net. Monads are incorporeal automatons. We fought over books. I chased the author over unstable crates swathed in orange fabric that served as a bridge or floating dock. Milk soap, milk sop as in a shopping list. Of the belly button, my Roberto wrote, a bouncing dot without a bay and fierce blizzards that stung the swaddled face. Si modade por bote un punto mas chico abandono para volver a rebotar. Spinning within spinning within blinding vortices. Before nominating her father for the highest office of the land, she depiliated her vulva, nervous lest she be exposed, as was my grandmother, who in the end could only manage soft and mushy food. The vulva is a monad. A soul cannot all at once open all its folds. The death of the Minotaur occurred within the cement gray walls of the cellar of the cellar. Sackcloth covered the door. Los sacos cubren la entrada del día. There were no windows. Sprinkles of blood decorate the chamber. Calmo el toro moribundo sosteniendo a sol bemol bala entre acoplades corchetes de la incomunicable forma de su destrucción. Meat hooks. In Raoul Zorita's injury, from within a sphere whose dimensions vary precipitously, are sky and sunlight within the waves, 
The monad is an eye that listens. Sea and sky are tombs. Fish devour sky. Horizons subsumed within monads. Roses spring from crowns of thorns and blind the basins of the eyes. The eye is a monad. Sea like sky falls into sky like ocean and Bergvall's drift. A monad within the shaking of the spheres, coursing light, packed ice melts. Each passing monad, folded fabric, folded spheres, layers of branches rub against one another. Inside is only the irritation of not seeing. You push aside the branches, shadows stick to your fingers, Quickly darkened, your bite holds the trace. To tranquilize the lack rhino is now my theme, so that it may be transported by helicopter across the savannah. In empty rooms of dissonant thought, the thought of feeling you lay alongside what you might be, of labor, of unabsented being, being small again. Everything is cold and strange except you, you and your echo. The pineal land is a walnut that focuses perception in Descartes' measured world. Paul Clay wrote, I reflect on the innermost heart. I write the words on the forehead and round the corners of the mouth. If I were to paint a truthful self-portrait, you would see an odd shell. Inside it would be myself, like the kernel in a nut. Symbols signify absences as if we were blind. Shadows are the time signature of Brownian motion. There is therefore nothing uncultivated or sterile or dead. No chaos, no confusion, save in appearance, somewhat as a pond would appear at a distance when we could see in it a confused movement, and so to speak, a swarming of the fish without, however, discerning the fish themselves. How were we to know that the translucent filaments were other than wrinkles in a watery world, graminaceous and telekies with wheels. Did the conjoined monsters with several heads spewing literature and other substances, gory and fiery as proposed by Sir Edmund Spencer, obey the laws of good and evil? Greater and lesser, the trajectories of the visible planets aligned in accord with projective meditation and and deduction, as Descartes proposed with respect to honor and mutability. We ourselves are defined by our own doubts, and these must be purged, argued Edmund Husserl. What is specifically peculiar to me as an ego, my concrete being as a monad, purely in myself and for myself, with an exclusive ownness, includes my every intention. By transcendental reduction to discover the imminent laws that they obey, animals and gods who populate the vegetable gardens and jungles of the cosmic sphere, dare I rest here, contemplating the night sky, I wobble on my feet. My music is monadno where I hear, where I heard a haunting cymbeline, percussive tones from drums and bagpipe in shrill harmony that shattered the ancient meeting house on the banks of the Piscataqua, Phoebus his steeds to water at those springs. Tuning is penetration in horse hairs and calf guts. Self or monad solipsistic scales, putting on a rubber is easier if you are rigid, but the routine can become autistic 
repetition. Confirm by this I I came to song. Confirm by this I came to song. My copying phrases from the various sources that lay at hand, feeling my way by random accident, and imminent coherence begins to manifest itself. Upon the density of the tablets, bricks of gold, Cartesian vortices gyrate. Today I do not exist. Instead, I follow reveries of Caribbean voyages to a distant shore where my sons and daughters and their children have established a concession that sells snow cones, blue raspberry most desired. The photo documents social reality and evinces a degree of attention appealing to subaltern minds. A naked boy on the second floor of the courtyard, a stairway that terminates in a blind wall, laundry lines simulate a safety night. net, pastel light, sublime aquamarine, masks the peeling facade.